Good evening, actually, everyone. And so uh, it is now just almost six o'clock on uh, Monday evening, and I'm just coming on live to share some reflections um, for this Sunday. And as we go into this week, what are some things to just be uh, thinking about or um, even contemplating? So this past Sunday, I spoke about living as a peacemaker uh, and how that's choosing to create a space for love to be real. And so this was our last um, uh, session, our last teaching on peacemakers and um, and how being a peacemaker is to be a child of God. And so um, that this this whole concept of space, the space to have real life, real love be um for real love to grow. It's a space where we choose to live in the house of love, to abide in uh, all that Jesus is doing, to abide with him and not to rush away and not to rush away from the Father's affection for us. And so I've been thinking about, okay, um, to love God's way looks like what? And so we read we read about this. Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians 13. Um, and we often hear this passage read at weddings, but I was just thinking, but this describes God's love. This is love through God's um, lens. And so love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. And it doesn't demand its own way. It's not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. It doesn't rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. That is our God, and that is what we're learning to do, but the reality is it's it's a challenge for us um, here on this earth. It's a challenge as humans, and to use cultural language, we really suck at it. (laughs) And so, so that's where we need God. We need him. And we recognize you know, at the beginning of the Beatitudes where it says, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God. That is us saying, God, I need you. I can't do this without you. I need you to show me how I can love like you love. And then in, in light of that, I was thinking about you know, following the way of Jesus, Christianity, how to, you know, allow these spaces for love to be real. And so at times, Christianity, following the way of Jesus can feel, can feel demanding. And, you know, we've got to love people we don't like, like, what is that? And so the way of Jesus, though, it's an invitation. It's not, it's not a demand on us. It's an invitation into his love. It's an invitation into his house of love because he knows we can't do it without him. He knows that we need his help. So it's this invitation. And so God, he is love. Like that's what scriptures tell us. That's when we encounter him, we we are starting to discover God is love. And love, as we just read in 1 Corinthians 13, is not demanding. And we might, we might say that at times following the way of Jesus may feel demanding because it feels like it's demanding of me. It's asking something of me. It's it's asking a lot of me. And then, you know, sometimes we may think, God, there's just so much. There's so much. And then we stop and we think just how much Jesus has done for us. And then I'm like, I want to be in the house of love. I want to be in his house. So there are many things that try and pull us out of the house of love, away from God's affection for us. And there are distractions and there are challenges around us. And we have opportunities to choose if we're going to view things from God's movement in us or from our own places of comfort. And so this week, what I want to encourage uh, all of us to do is to spend some time in the book of Psalms. I find it I find it so interesting that David moves in his writings, in his Psalms, moves from worshiping God and then asking God to deal with those who desire to take away his focus on God with their swords or their lies or their deceits. And you can read this in most Psalms. David's cry, he cries out, God, save me, Lord, take them down. Break in, you know, then he breaks into how much God loves him and how he loves the Lord and how the Lord is his deliverer. And there's this kind of ebb and flow of stating where he's at, the challenges that he's facing, and then he comes right back into worship. And so I want to just read uh, for us um, from Psalm 144. And just I want to encourage you this week to either, you know, you know, find a psalm that, you know, a psalm that you love to read. Maybe you've got a favorite 
uh, or just or you can meditate on Psalm 144, uh, or just even flip through the Psalms and pick a few and read them out and just meditate on how David flows from that place of just stating where he's at and then, you know, not letting that stop him from moving into worship, but pressing through and moving into worship. And so from Psalm, Psalm 144, I'm just going to read that for us um, and just share a few thoughts as I go through. So it starts out with, Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield, and whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. And, you know, David is saying here, God is my fortress. He's my stronghold. He's my safe place. In him I have refuge. In him I am I am safe in him. And then he goes on to say, Lord, what are human beings that you care for them? Mere mortals that you think of them? They are like a breath and their days are like fleeting shadow. And, you know, he's saying, God, it's so amazing. It's so amazing that you love us, that you think of us, that you care for us. And then he goes on, David goes on, he says, part your heavens, Lord, and come down, touch the mountains. And so they smoke, send forth lightning and scatter the enemy, shoot your arrows and rout them, reach down your hand from on high, deliver me and rescue me from mighty waters, from the hand of foreigners, whose mouths are full of lies and whose right hands are deceitful. And there he's calling out, God, you are my help in times of trouble. Come, come, I need you. He recognizes he can't do this alone. He needs the Lord. And then David says, I will sing a new song to you, my God, on the ten-string lyre. I will make music to you, to the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David. And it's, again, you know, he's, he's reaching out in worship. So he's, you know, he called out to God and then he's worshiping God. You give me victory. You deliver me. And then David goes on. He said, from the deadly sword, deliver me. Rescue me from the hands of foreigners whose hands are, whose mouths are full of lies and whose hands. Are... My phone just rang. <laughs> so I had to stop that. Moving along. Uh, and so David is saying, um, God help me. And, and again, we go back to that back to the Beatitudes. Please, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Reaching out and saying, God, I can't do this without you. I need your help. And then, so this is, so listen to this, and this sounds, this sounds like, um, again, it's because think about the Beatitude again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then, and then listen to this from verse 12. Then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands and by tens of thousands in our fields, and our oxen will draw heavy loads. There'll be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, and no cries of distress in our streets. Now, doesn't that sound like a place where God dwells? Um, and then David ends this with, I love this, blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed is the people who, to whom this is true. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. And so I just bless you this week to spend some time in the Psalms and see how, the, how David speaks to the Lord about where he's at and then worships um, and just hangs on to everything that the Father is and you know stays in the Father's affection. Um, and even when it's hard, he calls it out, but he turns back to worship. So I bless you to abide this week in the Father's affection for you and not to rush away. So have a great week and we will see you soon. Bye for now.